All right, all right, man. The Cat Williams marathon continue. It looked like uh, Cat Williams did an interview with, with 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 Willie D. I haven't even watched it yet, so I'm gonna watch this and react to it to this live with y'all. I have no idea what was said. Uh, I'm just gonna react to it because Cat Williams is hot in these streets. So let's get straight into it, man. Make sure y'all go follow Willie D on this YouTube channel. All right, go check it out. Uh. This video already already doing crazy numbers. It's just been three hours and already got 300,000 views. So, yeah, this video definitely going to hit a milli. So let's get straight into it. Another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world in the studio. Cat Williams. What's up? Thank King? you. How are you, sir? Oh, man. One more hop. I'll be on top. How about Prepare you? Hop. Yeah. Doing great. <laughs> doing great. Yeah, you're doing great, man. Um, Cleveland, Ohio. Dayton, that, Ohio. Cincinnati, but, but, but when you, I mean, see, my, my bad. You were born in Cincinnati, yeah, and then you were raised in Dayton. Yeah, raised in Dayton, correct. Man, yeah. you, you know, we had a, a show in Dayton once, and it almost like provoked a full blown riot. You know, you know, in Dayton, these, they had these cops with these big old ten gallon hats. They did big old white cornbread fed dudes, mm -hmm. and, and they were telling us, well, "Y'all gonna either pay for all of this equipment that y'all destroyed on the stage. We destroyed well, allegedly. We destroyed <laughs> uh, equipment, band equipment that yeah. belonged to uh, After Seven and Troop." Oh my. We were on the same Got it. Yeah, yeah. after seven and truth. We yeah. destroyed them, their uh, equipment. Allegedly. Allegedly. And Allegedly. they told us, y'all gonna pay for this stuff, or y'all going to jail. Mm -hmm. And so we basically just did the show for free because we gave all that money back. But Dayton is, was it, that that's, will forever be like in, embedded in my memory. Dayton, Ohio, for that reason. But I'm sorry, but what do you have a bad memory? But what do you, I mean, what, is, what are some good memories that you have well, from, from Dayton? Part of what you remember is a part of Dayton. So Dayton was one of the rare cities in America that was legitimately half black and half white. So, um, there was power on both ends. I, I, I came from a very powerful um, family in Dayton just because of our sheer numbers. So there were um, 13 on my father's side and seven on my mother's side. So we had, I had like 100 first cousins in one city. Like we just had a large uh, family and it was a great place for black people and it was a great place for white people. Um, it's just that you really couldn't be legitimately racist because your neighbors were of another color, if that makes sense. So, What's the power dynamic? Uh, was it more, mostly white people running it or black people? Well, that's the dynamic of America at that particular time. Um, one of my um, uncles was the chief of police. Another was the head pastor in town and you know, had some cocaine dealing uncles as well. So we were really rooted in the city, but it was a city of money. So we had Cooper tires, we had Dayton tires, we had IBM, we had NCR, we had Wright Patterson Air Force Base, we had University of Dayton. These are all places where you can make six figures even at that time. So it was a lot of money there. As far as on the radio, we would hear every hour five or six artists that were from where we were from so we thought that was a part of it we're hearing the ohio players and roger troutman and zap studio is our bus stop when we're seven huh. years old like so um i met prince while i was in dayton when i'm 12 like it was a uh, i never been to ohio before i never been to ohio really don't have any reasons to go to ohio but sounds like a nice place a very vibrant community for black people so you saw a lot of the, the street stuff. How did you end up? Um, first of all, did you end up doing any of the street stuff, get participating in any street activity? You mentioned your uncles selling drugs and all that. Um, well, I leave, I leave Dayton, Ohio, right before I'm 13. So I'm still at um, a young age. I'm just having heightened experiences because of my childhood and my background. So, um, like I don't, like I've always had money but I don't come from money. So I, I was able to cut grass in the summer and I was able to shovel snow in the winter. That's what I was allowed to do. So, but consequently, even as a kid, I'm making like six, $7,000 a year. And this is- At 12 years old? Before that, at 10, at 10. Just, um, just cause that's what I was allowed to do. And I'm a, I'm a hustler by nature. Like if I get a hold of a lick, I want to see how many times it flips, not if it flips, you know what I mean? So, um, once I'm gone from there, I'm trying my hand at other things door to door. And I had already made a million dollars before I was 18 doing door to door across the country. So I, nice. I had already tested out what a hustler, hustler, hustler were the positive things about me and um, how I could use that to my advantage economically yeah. um, from is, an early age. Is it true that you emancipated yourself from your parents at 13? Because I read that somewhere. <laughs> well, the Wikipedia says something like that. Yes, emancipation. Well, that's a whole nother topic, you know. Those who know, who know, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we just gonna leave that there. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shame the family. What I would say is that um, it can't be called run away because I didn't run away. Um, I, I left, but um, I, I don't, I don't tell that part of the story just because there's a zero chance that if a young person listens to me and follows my example on that, that they'll be okay. But um, I knew I would be, but you know, I was a little off. Like I knew Jesus left home at 13. So I didn't feel like I was out of pocket in any way. Wait a minute. Are you saying that at 13 years old, you was cognizant of the story of Jesus leaving home at 13 years old? 
I had been accepted to college before I was 12. So I was already a little bit more advanced than. Um, wow. So allegedly, apparently he emancipated himself at 13. Mm. Um, your, your average child. I, I had probably read 10,000 books at that period in my life. Um, <laughs> I see. I see. A lot of people got little side jokes about because, you know, uh, uh, Cat Williams went on Shay Shay said that he read like 10,000 books or like 5,000 books or 3,000 books in a year or something like that. You know, I don't put it past him, but that's a lot of books. You know, I, I think he might be over exaggerating a little bit, but I can definitely tell that he's a reader, though. So I was blessed in that way. But um, as you know, you can't really just live on that. So um, God navigated where I was able to see the um, underworld, if you will. So I, I go from my parents' house in Ohio to Miami, Florida by myself. I don't know nobody. And that's where the story begins. But in your formidable years, who is that person? Was that a single individual who inspired you or some guy or a person that you looked up to and you said, you know, I like the way that they move and I want to model myself after that person? Uh, yeah, this is going to be a weird answer. Um, Yes, that's one of the things that I was probably the best at. I did it with anybody and everybody. So I, when I was going to the library, I wasn't reading um, fiction books. I was reading nonfiction books, and it didn't matter what it was. I'm just, I know whatever's in this book, I don't know what it is. So I might have read like a thousand autobiographies, just the life of people that I don't know. And um, when you do that, you find out that if you were trying to learn something from everybody, you could actually learn something from every single person mm. that you met. And so um, it's that type of um, thinking that helped me avoid the pitfalls as I saw them. So the reason I never did drugs when I was an adult is because when I left and went to Miami and I'm living in a park, it's 30 people out there from all different places and they all are homeless and in a terrible situation just like me. And they're telling me that they used to be lawyers and doctors and nurses and I'm going, well, well what happened? And all of them is telling this story where everything in their life was fine and then they dealt with this drug and this is where it ended them out. So as a kid, I never saw the fun part of drugs. I never heard about nobody having a good time on drugs or, oh, you got to take this so you can feel it. I, I didn't. I didn't see it from that way. I had already seen what it would do to people. And they're telling me, like, I'm letting people tell me, hey, don't do not do this. Don't don't get to Hollywood and start sleeping with white women and doing cocaine because it'll kill you. Oh, yeah, no problem. Got it. So, you know, in a lot of things, I was just stupid enough to get the lessons. But that came from being willing to learn something from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. How long were you out on the streets? <clears throat> well, it sounds so harsh when you say on the streets. Just understand that I'm in, a, I'm in slacks and a shirt and a tie every day. And I'm eating at a five-star restaurant because I don't work this deal with the restaurant where I come in at five in the morning and I come and do the floors and clean up everything the bus people didn't do, knock out the old dishes. I do all of that, but I get to eat there for free. So I come later and have a five-star lunch as a 12-year-old because I'm already smoking cigarettes, but I, I got a mustache, so I, I don't look out of place. And then I go and I do my eight hours in the library to take the place of what schooling would have been. So um, two hours were spent collecting radios from people's cars at the marina, which funded me to um, at least have seven or eight hundred dollars a week in my pocket so that was the situation for i'll say 12 months hmm. was that somebody who came along a social worker or something like that and, and so you can tell that well well you know based on based on the information that he's saying you know he he pretty much took care of him of himself his whole life you know uh ran away with the age of 12 or 13 uh emancipated himself was on the road you know hey you know that's why I'm not judge. I, I don't. I, I'm not quick to judge people. I try to understand people because everybody acts a certain way for a reason. Nobody just. Well, I wouldn't say nobody, but the small percentage, the majority of people, uh, by the way they was raised, by the way they grew up, that developed them to be the person that they who who they are. Some people are just born evil, you know, <laughs> but you know, um, the majority of the time, you know. Uh, People have gone through certain things, and that's had, and that's molded them to the be that the way that they are. I saw you and said, "Yo, I talked to you. It's like, yo, I can help you out. Oh, you should do this or uh, that." <clears throat> no, um, you're looking at it a different way than I was looking at it. I wasn't in a pitiable situation by any means. Um, I was free, and um, it was an adventure that I was on. And I had already read all of these books. I know how this goes. I know that a terribly scary adventure is nothing for the warrior. He doesn't need to be in a good position. There is a God and he's going to see you through. You just have to make sure that you're hitting the marks to qualify for the blessing. Um, so I, I, I was never in a situation where someone would think that I needed some assistance. Where were you sleeping at? In the park that I told you about across the street from the library in Coconut Grove. Like on the ground, on the bench? No, they had a mattress out there. I had money, so people would get you stuff. Why didn't you just take your money and go get a crib? 
at 13? Yeah. It never crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never crossed my mind. Because I, I really do. I know it's young, but I do know people who, who are very young. Like if somebody is young enough to get out on the, go out on the streets and just say, I'm, I'm leaving home, yeah. a lot of times, and, and if they got money, they're savvy enough to It's not that I have money. I'm making some money. I don't have money. I'm making some money. Enough to get by. Well, I'm saying I don't have a long list of needs on the daily. I need to eat well. I need to drink well. And where are you keeping your money? Like in your pocket? I am. Yeah. I am. Anybody ever trying to rob you? Um, no, I, I did have somebody try to violate me while I was out there. Um, I think because I didn't know really what gay people were. So I oh, snap. Wait, 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 what? So someone tried to take your cookies? I wasn't really clear. I knew how gay people acted, as I had seen, but I wasn't aware that it had a sexual connotation to it. So um, as soon as the guy kept talking to me like he liked me, I was really confused because guys don't like guys. And I'm trying to figure out, is this something about your background that makes you talk like a lady while you're talking to me? But yeah, I had that as a situation. Um, but yeah. other than that, no, I, I wasn't frequently tried um, as a young person. Yeah. So I'm, I'm asking uh, some of these questions that I'm asking because I'm really trying to figure out, like, how did you develop your psyche? Like, you're a very insightful dude. Right. Just trying to figure out, like, like what did that start at? Can you pinpoint a specific time and space where you said, you know, yeah, um, I get it. I see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> probably like five years old. Hmm. Um, first and foremost, this is going to sound really, really weird, but um, I believed at that young age that you could have a relationship with God. And I know that that's kind of old fashioned now. Um, but when I was young, that's what I believed. And so I developed this relationship where we talk four or five times a day and we talk about everything and I'm coming to you. That's the same thing that they said on Club Shay Shay, you know what I mean? So you can tell that, you know, this is this is who who he is. You know what I mean? Uh, this is not something that he just made up on Club Shay Shay because he's saying the same thing. So when things are well and when it's not well. And if I ask for something, I know when you gave me what I asked for because it's the only time. So I understood at a young age that I wasn't like everybody else, that I was in a blessed position and that I had the ability to be able to make things happen if I could find the instructions and follow them. So mm. um, at five years old, that's how I thought. I knew when things were wrong with the Bible. I wasn't worried about authority because God was like the authority. And other than that, I got to tolerate you, but... I, I, I'm not allowed to bow down. I'm like that as, as a child. So my parents didn't do anything wrong. They just wanted me to live a life that I wasn't going to live. They wanted me to be this, and I was not free to live a double life. I can't be that and be what I'm trying to be. What was that they wanted you to be? Um, a part of their religion. Hmm. They were uh, very devout Christian? in religion. Christian? <clears throat> yes, a, a, a branch of Christianity, yes. At one point, did you become a Muslim? At one point, I became um, several religions because that's the only way you can really find out what's going on in a religion. Um, a religion is not something that you can just study the books about it and now you know about them. Uh -huh. um, I had to be a member of the Fruit of Islam in order to know um, Minister Farrakhan. That's the same thing that they said on Club Shay Shay. Um, calls me his son. I, I, I was not um, regular even in uh, that endeavor just because whoever the true God is, I don't play about him. And I understand that regardless of what you choose to call him, it's the same entity. And um, once you study all of the religions, you find out that nobody's really disagreeing with anybody. The Jews don't believe this whole set of things that Christians don't, and Muslims either. Why are people so afraid of Farrakhan? <clears throat> well, we got a light up on that one. If you had the ability to control the black people on this planet, there isn't anything that you couldn't take, dismantle, destroy, or interrupt. Mm. if you could mobilize black people. And so part of the ops agenda, a part of their modus operandi, is to find out which one of you niggas is a potential leader. And if you are, then we begin a work of progress on your life, which will make people get off of that. Um, it's a part of it, as much as in any defense, you're trying to figure out which way this dude is likely to go so I can rip that ball. It's the same. Yeah. Farrakhan is a polarizing individual. A lot of people yes. really, I do believe, don't really understand him. I think that there are people who get the message. This is what frightens them is because they know, as you alluded to, they they, are, they know his what he's capable of doing. You know, you're uniting black people and guiding and leading black people in the right in the right way. There's not been a successful one of those yet. So just like if you're a rapper, any rapper can get hit. <clears throat> yeah, we don't have a. We can go through 300 years of history and look for all the black people that fit the description you just said. They never make it. Yeah, which is why I believe that they should stop trying to make it. I really do believe that. You know, it's each one, reach one, teach one, but the leadership is in yourself. Like, all of us are capable, well, not all of us, but many of us are capable of being a leader. Like, instead of sitting around just waiting on one person to be that leader. You know, how well, about, well, well said, well yeah. said. So, 
this is a whole entire different interview uh, than the than Club Shay Shay. I can tell that uh, Willie D is just tra- is just trying to figure out who this person is. You know, who is this person is that I seen on TV? He's not really asking about who you got beef with. You know, uh, what's your issue with this comic? You know, it seems like this interview is not headed that direction, but it's more of an insight on Cat Williams the person and and what developed him to be this person so i'm definitely liking the beginning of this interview i'm going to stop it right here then i'm going to bring it back and we're going to do another interview right i mean do another reaction to this but uh i like the direction man we are definitely learning more about cat williams what what you know how how he grew up um what developed what made him to be the person that he is today you know he said that he got emancipated 13 you know he's out there on the streets out there you know you know, uh, his encounter with the, you know, gay person out there on the, on the streets. And he had to work and work at the restaurants and things like that. So, you know, he just moving and grooving out here saying that he was a part of a different religion group and his, um, his, his, his relationship with a uh, Farrakhan. So, uh, this is a good, 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 good interview right here. So I definitely will stop it right here and pick it back up later on today. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It's your boy, Damn D, signing out.